Courtney Clenny, known on social media as Courtney Taylor, became a well-known figure due to her work as a fitness influencer, Instagram model, and eventually an OnlyFans content creator. However, there was a lot more going on in her life behind closed doors. Born on April 21, 1996 in Midland, Texas, to her mother Deborah and father Kim. She grew up alongside her sister Morgan in a pretty financially well-off family. They were said to have been spoiled and given everything they would ask for. Courtney and her family were all very involved in sports and she participated in many activities like volleyball, swimming and gymnastics. While in high school she began to take exercising and physical activity in general, a lot more seriously, and years later she would become a qualified personal trainer. She decided to pursue other aspirations instead of attending college. She placed more of her focus on fitness and social media, and began noticing that her photos of herself in the gym would get a lot of engagement. She began posting consistently and her accounts on various platforms started growing rapidly, garnering over 1 million followers on Instagram. This landed her numerous sponsorships, and she was making a great deal of money. By leveraging her looks and creating engaging content, along with the rising popularity she branched out into OnlyFans and built a lucrative brand. Her OnlyFans account generated substantial income as the platform gained popularity for allowing creators to monetize exclusive content, often adult-themed. This kind of success thrust her into a world of financial independence, fame, and access to a lavish lifestyle, making over $3 million from the platform. Clenny's rise, however, wasn't without challenges. Like many public figures, the pressure of maintaining a perfect image on social media, combined with her turbulent personal life, created a dissonance between the glamorous life she portrayed online and reality. Courtney would meet Christian Obamselli sometime in 2020. Christian, nicknamed Toby, was born on April 12, 1994, and lived in Dallas, Texas. He was also involved in sports growing up, particularly basketball and football. Those around him said that he was not only great at sports, but also good with people as he was a very warm and caring person with a great work ethic. When it came to work, he was heavily invested in cryptocurrency and stocks, and became very successful at it. Within weeks of meeting each other, Christian and Courtney had begun a relationship. Friends of the pair claimed that in the beginning, everything was going well, and they were having a good time, but things changed after a few months. Christian's friends said that around this time they started to notice a change in him, and he had become quite stressed and withdrawn. This was more than likely as a result of Courtney becoming very controlling over his life. She would often get upset over small things, and pull him away from being able to hang out with his friends. Friends and acquaintances described their relationship as toxic. While they were seen together in public, they were known for their frequent arguments, often loud and violent. Christian would eventually become Courtney's personal assistant when it came to her social media and OnlyFans, catering to all her needs. This would give him more opportunities to travel which was fun, but he was now always around Courtney which wasn't always the best experience. At this time, they lived in Austin, Texas, and it seemed like Courtney became rather dependent on alcohol only exacerbating problems with her temper. She often visited the bars and clubs downtown and would also be given two DUI charges. In July of 2021, while she and Christian were in Las Vegas, the police were called after Courtney had thrown a glass at his head. When she was being questioned by the officer, she seemed very nonchalant about what she'd done. She claimed that she didn't throw anything, even though glass had been found on the floor in their hotel room. She finally admitted to throwing the glass after being pushed a little more on the matter. Have you ever been cited or arrested before? Yes. For what? In the DUI. So, why am I here? What's going on? Um, my boyfriend and I just got into like a loud argument. So you yeah, called... Once again, for what? Why do you call for help? Because we were getting really loud. We were getting loud. And I was like, oh my God, we're gonna like do damage to the room or something. Not damage to each other. Like I really wanna like- uh, why, why, why would you I think, like that. Why would you think that you were gonna do damage to the room? I like throwing something or like- Did you throw something? Did I? Yeah. No. Did anybody throw anything? No. So why would you think that there is damage to the room to be made? Because I've done that before in our house. And I what have you done? Thrown a glass and plate. Did you throw a glass or a plate to him today? No. Okay. So no, if I this is before. Okay. So when I go to the room and I see a broken glass on the floor, where did the glass come from? I don't. I don't know. I literally couldn't even remember how the fight started. Okay. Well. Was there? Yeah. Maybe I did. Okay. I'm. I'm being blue. Okay. 
I'm being completely honest with you. I felt, I feel like my like brain is scrambled eggs right now. Did anybody punch, hit, spit, throw anything at each other? Did he hit you or you did at him? Well, I'm guessing that I threw a glass, but that sounds like me, so. Oh, by the way, I just want to say, somebody mentioned earlier about like there being a chair on the floor. Mm -hmm. That was there. I don't know why we hadn't picked it up. Like that had nothing to do with a fight. We weren't throwing furniture at each other. Courtney would be arrested, and despite almost being badly injured, Christian would still decline to press charges against her. They both had intentions of moving out of Texas, with Christian thinking about relocating to London, but Courtney on the other hand, had dreams of moving to Miami. As per usual she would get her way, and the couple would relocate to Miami in 2022 from Austin. They found an apartment very close to the downtown area that reflected how much money Courtney was now making, costing around $10,000 a month. Courtney would often brag about paying the rent all by herself and would sometimes even threaten to kick Christian out if he misbehaved. She would once again frequent the nightclub and bar scene which would again negatively impact her already volatile and violent behavior. While on a podcast she would openly admit to being toxic. Do you like to be fully controlled or do no. you? I like to be submissive. Pretty well, Yeah, in the bedroom, yes. but like in my life I don't like anybody to tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, so you only want him to tell you what to yeah. do in the bedroom other than that you don't want him to tell you anything. Right. right. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's exactly it, yes. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like you're a control freak with your relationships. Oh, Be careful with this one. She's okay. going to boss you around it like, exactly. ah, I sweet just... toxicity. Tell me. So you only date rich black guys. So like, have you ever dated like any politicians or only like rappers or athletes or what kind of black, like rich black guys? You know, dabble here, dabble there yeah. a little bit. How much do you make a month? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we make good money. She seemed to find gratification in treating Christian poorly, constantly yelling insults at him and even racial slurs. Courtney would often throw things around their hotel rooms and apartment, and even throw his possessions off their balcony from time to time. She was honestly unhinged, but she would also love bomb him to make up for her actions by profusely apologizing and showering him with gifts. At one point, she even tried to make up for throwing all his clothes off their balcony, by gifting him with a Louis Vuitton luggage set. It was shortly after this that the well-known elevator incident occurred. In the video, it is obvious that Courtney is the one attacking Christian as he tries to block her strikes and simultaneously push her away. When looking at his messages and letters he sent to Courtney, you can tell that he was frustrated with her, but was still in love with her, and would defend her in front of other people. Back in November of 2021, there was apparently an incident where she stabbed in the leg, but it is presumed that it was not reported, but Christian messaged her and discussed it. They had been on and off again over a two-year period, but the dysfunction seemed to only get worse every time they got back together. Near the end of March 2022, Courtney had her mother Deborah come over to their apartment to try to put Christian out once more after yet another breakup. He would sleep on small sofa near the entrance of their apartment for a few days. Courtney's mother would eventually go back to her own home on April 1st, leaving Courtney and Christian alone to figure things out for themselves, but again the police would have to be called, but this time by the concierge of their apartment complex. In the bodycam footage of this encounter, Courtney would appear very emotionally unstable and would keep interrupting the concierge while they tried to explain what they witnessed to the police. She was very adamant about getting a restraining order against him. She would later claim that it was only hours after this, that she and Christian would get back together, but because of what would transpire shortly after, this could never be confirmed with Christian. On the evening of April 3, 2022, at 4.57 p.m., Police were called to the One Paraiso luxury apartment complex in Miami Sedgewater neighborhood, where Courtney and Chrysician lived. The emergency call was made by Courtney herself, who told the operator that she had stabbed her boyfriend during a domestic altercation, and it also sounded like Christian in the background. Ma'am, listen to me. You need to stop screaming on the line and to give me the address. God, I can't see my arm. 3101. I can't feel my arm. What's Ma'am, so what is the address? What's the address? 3131. 3131, North East 7th Please, God, please. Come see my address. When police arrived, they found Christian Obamselli with a stab wound to his chest while in Courtney's arms. As they looked around the apartment, they found several puddles of blood including on the kitchen island, in the bathroom and at the back of the living room. While covered in blood, Courtney was asked by the officers to sit outside the apartment. After Christian was rushed to Jackson Memorial Hospital, 
Courtney was taken down to a local police department for questioning after admitting to stabbing him but in self-defense. She would be questioned for four hours, but her answers were mostly incoherent. She would go on to somewhat describe the events of the evening but she would go on to say that it was a blur. According to her, after she and Christian had reconciled, he went for a walk as she stayed at the apartment watching YouTube videos. Then she went live on Instagram, wrapped up at 3 p.m., and Christian was now back home with a Subway sandwich. They would then get into an argument about Christian no longer sharing his live location. In the end he would res hair it, but then asked Courtney to do the same, but she chose not to. Based on her account, she alleges that he then grabbed her neck and pushed her to the floor, but she would get away. Christian would charge after her prompting her to grab a kitchen knife and scream don't come any closer. Apparently Christian did not stop, resulting in Courtney throwing the knife at him over a 10-foot distance. You dropped a knife. Because I okay, yeah, I grabbed a knife. I grabbed a knife and I, I said, like pretty much just like don't get any close to me. And then, you know, said something, you know, and then I just like threw it. And I really How exactly was thinking, did you throw it? Did you just throw it like that? How many times? No, how, how, how exactly did you throw it? Like you threw it like this, or kind of like you like kind of like flung it at him, overhead, or how how did that? Oh, I just flung it. You just flung it over your head, or from like like this. Okay. I'm so from that. like beside I'm your head. Holding it, yeah. So not like okay, like I'm holding it like this. This is not the knife. The um, the the blade. Door? Right, the blade. Oh. I, I'm not. I. Just, for dang sure did not stab him. That would be insane. I mean, I didn't even think that this would touch him. However, after realizing that he was stabbed, she proceeds to call her mother and stay on the line for 13 crucial minutes while he continued to bleed out. It was after this call that she would then call emergency services which was questionable. Even during her questioning, she said that she didn't have time to really think about her story, which was very strange to say. She even questions whether her own actions were justifiable. If I could have like been given all these questions, you know, before, I could be like, hmm, please let me think about it. Or when I'm trying to remember like a whole situation of where I was very upset about something, yeah. which I've learned this in therapy or whatever, it's like write down like all the details so you don't forget. Just like write it all out clearly mm -hmm. so it makes sense to you and makes sense to somebody else. But I haven't had a chance to have a pen and paper or my phone yeah. to like write down exactly what happened. And yeah, I haven't really even like fully thought about it. Yeah. So honestly, my, my answer is I couldn't, even, I don't remember. Just two hours later Christian was pronounced dead from his injuries, and the officers would deliver this news to Courtney. She starts breathing pretty heavily, and even asks for a hug. Christian's family and friends were beyond distraught about the news, but after hearing that Courtney was involved, suspicions about her part in all of it began to grow. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, Courtney was not arrested. Police cited a need for further investigation and accepted her claims that she was a victim in the situation. This decision sparked outrage, particularly from Christian's family and friends, who believed that Courtney's version of events did not align with what they knew about the couple's relationship. The lack of immediate charges led to accusations of racial bias in the handling of the case, with critics pointing out that Christian, a black man, may not have received the same level of leniency had the roles been reversed. While all of this was going on, Courtney was seen having a good time drinking with her dad. As the investigation unfolded, several pieces of evidence began to surface that called into question Courtney's claim of self-defense. One of the most significant pieces was security camera footage from an elevator that was taken just a few days before Christian's death which you would have seen earlier in this video. Courtney is seen hitting and slapping Christian repeatedly, while he appears to try to defuse the situation, making no attempt to retaliate. This footage added a new layer to the case, suggesting that Courtney might have been the aggressor in the relationship, contrary to her claims of being a victim of DV. Neighbors corroborated this, stating that they had often seen her being violent toward Christian, and that he rarely fought back. Courtney would flee Miami in June of 2022, and head back to Texas to stay close to her family, even spending over $1 million on a home near them. In addition, she would also wire $1.2 million into her father's bank account for safeguarding according to Courtney. Her drinking habit got even worse, and she would then be admitted to a rehab facility in Hawaii, for substance abuse and PTSD. In August 2022, after months of investigation, prosecutors formally charged Courtney Clenny with second-degree murder. 
They argued that the killing was not an act of self-defense, but rather a result of Courtney escalating aggression toward Christian Obamselli. The state's case hinged on the idea that she had been the primary aggressor in the relationship and that her actions on the night of the stabbing were premeditated or, at the very least, reckless. There was so much evidence to support the notion as there were already prior situations of battery that were recorded and involved the police along with the letters and text messages that Christian had left behind. Then came the results from the medical examiner after reviewing Christian's injuries, confirming that it was not possible for his injury to be the result of Courtney simply throwing the knife at him from the distance mentioned. With a wound 8 centimeters deep, the stabbing would have had to be done at close range. Courtney's defense team has maintained that she acted in self-defense and has emphasized the narrative that she was a victim of domestic violence. Her attorney, Frank Prieto, has stated that she was trying to protect herself during a violent confrontation with Christian, and that his behavior toward her had become increasingly abusive over time. They argued that the fatal stabbing was an unfortunate result of a fight that got out of control. However, the prosecution has sought to dismantle this narrative, pointing to evidence like the elevator footage, as well as witness testimonies, to show that she had a history of violent behavior. They argued that she had a pattern of physically attacking Christian and that the fatal stabbing was the culmination of a long-standing pattern of aggression. They even had recordings that Christian had made before his death of him and Courtney arguing about him simply talking to another woman. So shut up and let me f***ing slap you, you know, Give me my phone. You have your phone. You literally talked to her without telling me. Courtney, I was on a bike ride and she passed me and I said hi. Uh, you and Courtney are having a, a live chat. My bad, I forgot to tell you that. That doesn't make you to act and call me a f***ing You're a f***ing Yes, yes, thank you. Come with me. I want you to get away from me! The case has drawn considerable attention due to its focus on domestic violence, with each side presenting starkly different portrayals of the couple's relationship. The defense's strategy has been to paint Courtney as a woman driven to desperation by an abusive partner, while the prosecution is attempting to show that Christian was a victim of Courtney's violent tendencies. As of right now, 2024, the case has gone to trial, and both sides are making their arguments. The legal battle is expected to be lengthy and complex, with Courtney facing a possible life sentence if convicted of second-degree murder. One of the most striking aspects of this case is how Courtney's social media persona clashed with the events of her personal life. On platforms like Instagram and OnlyFans, she presented herself as a confident, fitness-focused influencer with a glamorous lifestyle. Her photos and videos projected an image of success, beauty, and independence, which captivated millions of followers. However, as the details of her relationship with Christian came to light, it became clear that her online persona was far removed from her real life. Initially, her fans rallied behind her, offering support and defending her claims of self-defense. But as more information became available, especially the surveillance footage and witness testimonies, public sentiment began to shift. This case really highlights how social media can shape public perceptions of individuals involved in legal controversies. There's some speculation that that her large following and online fame played a role in how the case was initially perceived, with many assuming that her version of events was accurate. However, as with other cases involving high-profile social media figures, the reality turned out to be much more complex. The case has also sparked conversations about DV, particularly when it comes to the dynamics between men and women. Traditionally, domestic violence cases are framed with the woman as the victim and the man as the aggressor. However, this case has challenged that narrative.